Hello, and welcome to the reading of The Haunted Tea Cozy by Edward Gorey, a dispirited and distasteful diversion for Christmas. Here is a drawing which I did for a friend. A fan of the books. Jane Rago. I have called the Edward Gorey Museum, which is in Massachusetts, in the home of Edward Gorey, former home, and talked to the manager there. This book is dedicated to the memory of Matthew Green. Edmund Gravel, known as the recluse of Lower Spigot, to everybody there and elsewhere, prepared to take tea by himself on Christmas Eve. There you can see Edmund Gravel, known as the recluse of Lower Spigot. Edward was hardly able to cut a slice of fruitcake from the last one he had received more than a decade ago. And there you can see our sweet Edmund attempting to cut a slice of fruitcake. Is now aged. Waiting for the week's tea bag to steep. He wrote by hand several letters to the newspapers anent the price of a typewriter ribbon, having risen the day of winter solstice. And there you can see our sweet Edmund writing by hand several letters to the newspapers while waiting for the week's tea bag to steep and perhaps one might see a tea cozy. Or not. The tea cozy suddenly twitched, and from beneath it leapt a creature many times the size of the space within, even if it had not already held the teapot. What kind of odd creature is this? Some Edward Gorey creation, I presume. I am the Bahumbug, it declared. I am here to diffuse the interests of didacticism. And here you can see, in no uncertain terms, the Bahumbug as it declares that it is here to diffuse the interests of didacticism. Indeed. A knocking was heard at the door, through which, without it opening, stepped a diffuse but transparent personage. Now perhaps you can begin to see a transparent personage.
coming through the door. I am the specter of Christmas that never was. It muttered, and I have come to show you affecting scenes. And here you can see the specter of Christmas that never was coming to show us affecting scenes. Gravel and his companions found themselves at a great distance somewhere to the north. And here you can see our characters have transported perhaps to somewhere in the north. A small orphan called Nub and a large stray dog named Bruno huddled against a tombstone whose inscription was worn away. And here you can see the apoplectic, the dyspeptic, the small orphan called Nub, and a large dog named Bruno who appears to be black, huddled against a tombstone, whose inscription was worn away. There was nothing on it. Across the road from the courtyard of the churchyard, Alberta Stipple returned home to find the wallpaper in the drawing room gone. Indeed, you can see from this image, there appears to be no wallpaper. Quite a mysterious intrigue, don't you think? Three doors to the east, the Edward Boggles could not agree whether the grandfather clock was fast or slow. And here you can see the mysterious antique grandfather clock. Not the grandmother clock, but the grandfather clock. The spirit and Edward Boggles. The high street of the village Reverend Flannel lost his tuning fork. And here you can see Reverend Flannel losing his tuning fork. There is a child. In the cottage next to the post office, Alma Crumble, or pronounced more accurately, Alma Crumble, broke her wrist, stirring batter, at which the bug declared in a minatory tone that that was enough of that. Can you all see the pictures, or is there no video, as one has implied? No sooner 
were they back, then a twittering was heard outside the window, through which, without breaking the glass, drifted a second subfuse. But transparent personage. And there is the transparent personage here, appearing to be a female. Well, judging from the headdress, the ornament upon one's noggin. I am the specter of Christmas that isn't, it murmured, and I have come to show you distressing scenes. And here, again, distressed. Albina Fennel reclined on a chase lounge and waited for a letter from her brother in a far-off Hokkaido, Japan. Long. Over the way, Alfreda Scrumble, Scumble was abstracted from the veranda by gypsies, despite the barks of Nero. Alfreda Scumble Next door, but one, the Edward Grapples, senior and junior, had an argument as to what day of the week it was. So one door over, Edward, sorry, Ed, Edgar Grapples, senior and junior, I presume senior and junior had an argument as to what day it was. To the south, in the cemetery, a wrong coffin in a newly dug grave was found to contain rolls of used wallpaper. And now we can see can you all see that? The missing wallpaper. Can you see the images? In a nearby villa, Edo Hagel sprained his ankle while playing billiards, at which the bug declared in an admonitory tone, or admonitory tone, that this, <laughs> sorry, that is enough of that. And here you can see... Edo Hagel, or Edo. And the bug saying, declaring, in fact, that is enough of that. No sooner were they back than a scratching came from under the floor, through which, without disturbing the boards, 
ascended a third, subfuse but transparent, personage. And here's the personage coming from the floor. How mysterious and intriguing, don't you think? I am the specter of Christmas that never will be, it mumbled. And I have come to show you heart-rending scenes. The bug, our hero, and the specter. And now, Alicia Grumble woke in the, the night, unable to think where she had put her Bible, or Bible, as they say in the South. And here, one can see Alicia Grumble. Grumble. To the house opposite Fido was returned from the taxidermist and set down by the fireplace. To the house opposite, comma, Fido was returned from the taxidermist and set down by the fireplace. And there one can see Fido, fresh from the taxidermist. In a residence to the west, Alithia Funnel lay on the sofa, remembering her fiancé, who had gone down with the Alexandra. And look how melancholy, look how apparently depressed Alethia Funnel is. It was nostalgically remembering her missing fiancé who had apparently gone down with the good ship Alexandra. How horrid. Beyond, at the ancestral home, Lady Snaggle was informed her husbands were the brains behind an international gang of wallpaper thieves. And here you can see Lady Snaggle being informed that her husband were, was behind the international gang of wallpaper thieves. Hmm. It is a foot. At the lodge, Edwin Stoppel, attempting to deal with a loose slate, fell off the roof, at which the bug declared in an abjur <laughs> abjurgatory tone that that will be enough of that. No sooner were they back than Gravel cried, I shall give a party and ask everyone in Lower Spigot and others from elsewhere and plunged into pinning 
invitations. And here you can see invitations being pinned while the bug is over the haunted tea cozy from which it sprang. The Sinosure or the Sinosure was a cake taller than anything else in the room. A conflation of Chartres Cathedral and the stupa at Boro Boudur, iced in dazzling white sugar. Inside was a quarter ton of fruit cake. Now the fruit cake is not apparent here, but you can see three characters obviously amazed at something the size of Chartre Cathedral, which is oddly spelled char tres and the stupa at Boro Boudur. Giggling, dancing, and shrieking prevailed, and as the evening wore on, were carried to the very edge of the unseemly. And here you can see such unseemly acts as befell these tragic characters. That is apparently the end of our story. How mysterious. Here you can see one of the pictures that I used to draw my fan art. And here again is my fan art, which I gave to Linda Rago's daughter, Jane, because they are fans of Edward Gorey also. And indeed, in New Hampshire, there was a used bookstore that sold us many of these books and knew the author, Edward Gorey, and it is said that he died in a boating accident. But that is another story. Well, thank you for listening. I hope that you can see or could see the images. If not, I apologize. We can do another one at a later time. There are many other Edward Gorey stories. The Gashley Crumb Tinies. The Doubtful Guest. How doubtful. The Amphigori also. So as you can see, Edward Gorey did not die in vain. His legend lives on in books like The Dwindling Party, which happens to be a pop-up book. for children of all ages. A grotto. Oh, flying demons. A sea serpent or a pond serpent. There we go. Oh, what, what was that? Nice gazebo.
So tune in next time for perhaps another Edward Gorey or whatever else we decide to look at and read together. This was a card written by Mike. And this was a card written by Jane. And here are some calendar images. Betray no qualms when asked for alms. From the eclectic abyssidarium. A hidden bird is often heard. Look back before you close a door. Indeed, good advice for everyone. Cheerio and pip-pip.